What words would you use to describe what it feels like to follow Christ for you? Heavenly Father, I pray that you would speak to us today, that you would give us your vision for what the church, your church can be and what your calling is for each of our lives. Through Christ we pray, amen. So when you think of words to describe to follow Christ, what words do you think of for your life this week? Words like exciting, adventure, risky, meaningful, fruitful, focused, obedient, boldness, faith stretching, supernatural power experiencing, uh, rewarding the power of God at work in your life, reliant on God, life being changed, other lives being changed, more than you could ever ask or imagine. Or when you think about your experience of walking with Christ, the reality of your relationship with God and what it means to be a part of the church, do you think words like comfortable, safe, needs met, dry, disappointed, not quite what I had hoped for, nothing special, Ordinary, pretty much like everybody else. When you read the Bible and how God works in the lives of people who follow closely to him, what words do you think those people would use? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 um, struck me recently. It says, the writer says, and what more can I say? Time is too short for me to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength in weakness, became mighty in battle, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Other people were tortured, not accepting release so that they might gain a better resurrection. Others experienced mockings and scourgings, as well as bonds, bounds, bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they died by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, destitute, afflicted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and on mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these were proved through their faith. What words would you use to describe those people of faith that God says he admires in the Bible? I love that line. It says, the world was not worthy of them. I know that's what we want God to say of us. But words like safety, comfort, making sure my needs are met, certainly would not describe the lives of people totally sold out to God. The description of those people is anything but ordinary. I'm sure that they looked at their lives and thought, God is doing more through me than I ever could have asked or imagined. The world was not worthy of them. One of the things we value at New Life is risk. We don't value risk for risk's sake. We don't value risk just because we are adrenaline junkies. But because of Matthew 25, the parable of the talents that Jesus tells, in the parable of the talents, Jesus tells this parable of these, this master that goes off and he gives his finances, basically his financial responsibility to three servants, three stewards. To one he gives one, to one he gives two, to one he gives five. And then he goes away for a period of time. And, the, and, and when he comes back, the one who had five and two, they risked it all and they had doubled, doubled it all. Double what had been given them. And the master comes and says, well done, good and faithful servants. You've been faithful with little. Faithful means risk, obviously, as well as wise. I'll make you ruler over many, over much. But the one who didn't risk at all, who played it safe, he buried his one talent. And again, I, I think it's important for us to notice he was not unwise in that he wasted it. He wasn't... 
um, selfish with it. He didn't indulge with it. He didn't make stupid, you know, gambles with it. He just played it safe. He played not to lose. He buried it. He lived like everybody else. In a sense, he lived as though he hadn't been entrusted with any gift from the master. And because he played it safe, the master says, calls him a wicked, lazy servant and condemns him in no uncertain terms. Here's the question. How are you risking for God this week? <clears throat> how are you living at risk for the kingdom this week or this year so that everything is sometimes put at risk? So you're risking it all for him. In John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. If that is true, and we know it is, and we are listening to Jesus' voice, then Jesus' voice is going to call us to stretch, to risk, and not to safety. That's why I was challenged when I recently heard the story of Joe and Gary, a couple of rednecks from <clears throat> Scotland. Joe McCarthy, 55, and Gary Taylor, 45, have been working in Ukraine to move people out of Ukraine across the border and into Poland um, to safety ever since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, Joe and Gary are not special people. They're not special forces. They're not professional smugglers. They're not trained missionaries. They're actually landscape gardeners who saw the need and in the name of Christ said, we're gonna go rescue some people. Recently, they wrote about being caught in a convoy of Russian troops as they headed northeast to the city of Sumy. During one standoff, it said they froze in terror as the Russian troops stole their supplies and shot out their tires. Joe told a BBC interviewer, he said, we felt like it was an open field day for the troops. He said, the last couple of days, we've been held at gunpoint by Russian troops. We've had our tires shot out. We've had our truck ransacked. They've stolen my phone. Joe said, basically, we ended up on the tail of a Russian convoy. They let us get about halfway down for some reason. I don't know why. And then they wouldn't let us pass anymore. We were told to park to the side of the road and wait for the convoy to pass. And then it was just like an open field day. As so many went past, they would jump out, get out, get us out of the van, hold us at gunpoint, and rummage through our van. They took the food that we had, cigarettes we had, they took away our phones, shot out our tires. The friends eventually were allowed to move on. They said, we drove down the road on two flat tires. Although we did have a spare, it wasn't worth putting on. We did this for about 15 miles on flat tires until some locals saw us and put some secondhand tires on the car. We still managed to get to Sumi. We managed to collect a young student called Rachel from Ireland, as well as six other people before the bombing started last night, he said. So they were well away and we took them to safety. After being held at gunpoint, they said, the, the pair, the, it says, the pair are still ferrying people across the border and do not plan on returning to Scotland anytime soon, their home. We are now headed toward Uman, Uman, Joe said. We will stay there for the night and get back to the border tomorrow. Me and Gats, his friend Gary, will stay here as long as we can. He said his wife was really upset and crying when he spoke to her on the phone on Monday. It was her birthday, actually, he said. So obviously I didn't make it. But we had a chat and I said we had to get back to the city to save these people. She said, just go for it. That's what, and so that's what we'll do. I read that story and I thought, okay, Brett, so what are you doing to risk for Christ this week? Um, and I think it's a good question for all of us to ask. Gary and Joe, and many others around the world risk their lives for Christ every day. And sometimes I think I lack the boldness to actually ask somebody, how can I pray for you? I lack the boldness maybe to just start a spiritual conversation with somebody, even though my life is not at risk to do so. James 4, 17 says, therefore, 
The one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. The person who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, it is sin. Most of the time, living by faith is not that dramatic. It's simply knowing the right thing to do, hearing God's voice and following in obedience, doing it. It's simply being generous and putting God first in your finances, tithing. It's starting a spiritual conversation with somebody because God puts them in your relational sphere. It just means simply making a commitment to spiritual disciplines this week, like reading the Bible, praying, fasting, knowing the right thing to do and doing it. Sometimes it's just doing the right thing with your spiritual giftedness, not just to make money, but to serve the kingdom. It's knowing the right thing to do in loving your neighbor when you feel like being angry, when you feel like lashing out, when you feel like being passive aggressive. You love your neighbor and you do good to those who harm you. It's following God's call on your life. I think the difference often between the life lived in faith and the one that isn't lived in faith is simply asking God every moment, God, what's the right thing for me to do right now and to obey? And if we will be faithful in little, as Parable of the Talents teaches us, then God will give us opportunities to obey and to be faithful with more. But it begins by simply saying, God, how can I be obedient to what you're calling me to today, to the right things today? What words will you use to describe your relationship with God, your walk with Christ at the end of this week? If the Bible being written today, I wonder, would your life and mine be included among the list of people here in Hebrews 11. What more can I say? Life is too short for me to tell you about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions. All they did was understood the right thing to do and do it. They did it. They quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength in weakness, became mighty in battle, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead raised to life again. Other people were tortured, not accepting release so that they might gain a better resurrection. Others experienced, meaning they could have been released if they de denied Jesus, but they refused to deny Jesus. They just did the next right thing, even though doing the right thing meant execution. Others experienced mockings and scourgings as well as bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sodden too. They died by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin, goatskin, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated. And the world was not worthy of them. They wandered not in mansions and comfort, but in deserts and on mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground, and all these were approved through their faith. May God approve us through our faith as we walk in obedience to him this week. Heavenly Father, help us to obey you in the small, clear things this week, the small, clear things today. And when we give ourselves an excuse to not obey, an excuse to do the easy thing, not share our faith, not speak boldly, not give generously. Um, help us to hear your still small voice whispering us to trust in you with all of our hearts that we might live lives worthy of you. To Christ we pray. Amen. Hope to see you soon.